even though you knew it was coming, even though his music hit and the, the place went nuts, it still didn't get as loud as it did when they finally saw it, right? So to say that he's not a needle mover, I don't know. I mean... A certain talent from the other company mentioned that CM Punk never moved the needle. Do you have a take on that? Oh, man. I mean, you know, I don't really get into those things. I know he moved our needle, <laughs> you know, like uh, when it came time for our rating, we did really well. And he sold out, you know, AEW sold out the United Center with not even mentioning his name, which is pretty cool considering they all knew what was coming. Uh, but no one, you know, we didn't give it away. No one gave it away. And I think the best part is that even though you knew it was coming, even though his music hit and the, the place went nuts, it still didn't get as loud as it did when they finally saw it. Right. So to say that he's not a needle mover, I don't know. I mean, maybe data shows differently. I have no idea. I'd have to, I'd have to go check. Also, you know, he's been gone for so long. So the fact that he chose AEW um, and Tony was able to make the deal that no one else could do, right? He wouldn't go anywhere. So I just think that there's, you know, everyone is entitled to their opinions. Um, I also don't know what moves the needle anymore, right? Like when I was growing up, you know, there'd be five, 600 people at a car dealership, you know, trying to meet, you know, Shawn Michaels before a house show. Um, at the, five years ago, you couldn't, you know, some meet and greets had no one there. So it's really weird. Like, I think wrestling isn't a booming period again, which is great. Uh, great for everyone, especially me, you know. And, uh, but at the same time, you know, I really just think that, you know, he is a, he's a megastar, right? And especially he's on the show, you know, Heels Now and, and just all the stuff that he was able to do, whether successful or not. I mean, he went in the UFC, so that's successful to me. Um, so the fact that he was able to cross over and get his name out there more, he just becomes a bigger star. And so I think we, we've, we're going to reap the benefits here at AEW. Fantastic. Uh, I, I know it's exciting as a backstage, uh, uh, you know, uh, personnel to see new talents come in. But uh, is it also scary as an active performer that somebody's taking away your spot with the influx of talent that is coming in? I mean, yes and no, right? Like, I think if you're a younger talent that doesn't understand how the wrestling industry works, maybe. Um, someone like myself, listen, I'm, I was just happy to even get a chance to wrestle in AEW. So I just take everything and I just try to enjoy the day. Um, but with that being said, of course, I mean, there's going to be spots that are going to be filled by other people. So there's two things you could do about it. Well, three. I mean, you can, you know, you can give up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, take your ball and go home. You can try to out politic everyone backstage, um, which really doesn't help anybody because all that does is maybe hold the other people back, but it doesn't move you forward. And then the third thing is just work harder, figure out what they've done, figure out how they have that kind of equity with the audience, um, you know, and try to figure out how you can connect with them. Like I'm choosing, right, to be I want to be the most hated person in AEW on, on screen. Now, I don't care whether that's go away heat um, or you just hate my character, whatever it is. I don't care as long as you hate me, as long as you're booing me. Now, if the fans get up and walk out when I'm wrestling, that's not what I'm looking for. But 17,000 at the United Center last night on Dark when I, I you know, wrestled Evil Uno and they're all chanting QT sucks and they're booing me. So I think I'm doing something right. So I try not to feed into, uh, you know, a lot of the, the Twitter, you know, wars that, that people have with me, unless I'm just having fun with them. But for the most part, you know, because it's not real. That's people on Twitter. It's about seven people all, you know, tweeting 100 times as opposed to, you know, 100 people tweeting seven times. You know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it is a little scary, I guess, if you're a younger up and coming talent. But man, you know, think about how much longer of a career they have. And on top of that, like someone like a CM Punk, you know, it's not like in 2005 or 2007 or whatever it was, he went to ECW. It's not like when he went to ECW, he was automatically the king of ECW, right? Everyone has to start somewhere. So as long as they understand that, uh, they should be okay. I mean, we have a, a great, great young talent roster. 
Um, and then with Dark, Elevation, and Rampage, and even Dynamite. There's people on Dynamite that get opportunities that, you know, I'm sure they didn't even think they were going to get right out the gate. But, you know, it is what it is. So I think that, uh, like I said, if, if you harp too much on other people, you're not going to focus on yourself. <laughs>